work. It's a lot easier to go down with gravity than back up. And uh, we got him down. But that's what happens when you panic. You do things that aren't good for you or for others. By the way, that's the only kid I've ever kicked rock climbing. <laughs> and he never held it against me. <laughs> and uh, the others are, I can illustrate it this way. When bad things happen, most people wait for somebody else to tell them what to do. They just sit there, or they go about doing what they always did, which is usually not their bright idea. There was a subway fire in London, and there's smoke and fire coming up out of an escalator shaft. And people are getting on the escalator shaft with smoke and fire coming out of the shaft and going down it. They're getting killed as they're going down that escalator. And a police officer blocks the top of the escalator and a lady gets in his face and says, let me by. No, let me by. I've got to catch that train. He said, lady, I don't even think there's a train down there. You're not going down. I've got to catch that train. You don't understand. I've got No, ma'am, you don't have to be on that train. She's fighting with him and there's smoke and fire and she wants to ride the escalator because she wants to do what she always does. She's supposed to catch a train at this time every day. Friends, this world is about to go crazy. And if you keep doing what you always do, you're going to go crazy with it. You've got to learn to listen and focus in on what God's Word says. And then you do the wise things. You don't follow the crowd. You follow God's Word. You need somebody out there that's doing the right thing. And it won't be the majority. We were going into Baltimore, Washington International Airport. It was in August of 2006. Unfortunately, there was an event in London the night before. It was an attack on Heathrow Airport. And overnight, they put in the no liquid restrictions with no advance warning to the population. And we park in a remote parking spot, get on the parking shuttle bus, and we're driving towards the airport, and there are helicopters hovering over the airport. And I hear people talking about new restrictions. And I'm thinking, new restrictions and helicopters hovering over the airport, this might be a challenging day. You know, we're in the, you know that, you're in the area that has heavier security than other places in and out of airports around here. And uh, so, as we came in BWI, <laughs> They were lining people up outside, and they had these bullhorns, and they were explaining the new restrictions. As we're getting off the bus, I said, Karen, these are lines to nowhere. They're not going anywhere. Let's just walk in the building. Nobody's stopping us. So we got off the bus, walked right into the building, got in line for security, which was huge. And they, well, here's why it was so big. Everybody had to open their carry-on, take their liquids out, and throw it in a tra trash dumpster. And they had dumpster after dumpster rolling in there. Mm -hmm. All these ladies with their big bottles of expensive perfumes. It was either trash it or skip your flight. It was chaotic. But most of the people saw lines outside. They got in those lines. Why? Because everybody else was. You watch people in airports. They just follow the... Be careful. Think on your own. Uh, story listening is important. 1 Corinthians 10, 11. Now all these things happen to them as examples that they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you will be able to bear it. All these stories in the Bible were given up to us to help us know how to live today. Hey, let's see. The book of Daniel. It has prophecies that tell us what, and then it has a bunch of stories that tell us how. How do you live in troubled times? The stories tell you. I mean, hey, bow down or you're going to get cooked. That's troubled times. All right? And so you have these kind of things in Daniel. I mean, pray and we'll throw you to the lion's den. That's troubled times. But it shows you how to live in them. It's important to learn to listen uh, to stories. 
Remember the story of Chelsea, Sol Captain Solenberger? Uh, Miracle on the Hudson? Yeah. He's taken off. He flies up. Uh, actually, the co-pilot's in control of the plane. They ingest a bunch of birds into the engines, puts out both engines. Aircraft on the climb up in the New York City area with no, suddenly no power. Not a good scenario. They radio in that they've, what's just happened, they're cleared to land at a certain airport nearby. Captain Solenberger has now taken control of the airplane and he radios back negative, we're in the Hudson. Was he in the Hudson yet? No. no. He's just answering, I'm not even trying for your airport because I'm afraid I'm not going to make it and if I don't make it, I'm going to kill everybody on this plane and I'm going to kill people on the ground. I'm in the Hudson where my people have a fighting chance in here and I'm killing nobody on the ground. And he put that thing down for a perfect water landing. And the only people who got hurt were people who slipped on the wet wings while they were waiting for rescue. <coughs> a few days later, in New York, a small commuter plane crashes into houses, killing everybody on board the planes and people inside the house. The difference between the two captains? The second captain didn't even follow the requirements of switching to switching off the autopilot in icing conditions. He ignored what was going on. You see, Captain Solenberger had a hobby. He read survival airplane crash stories about what you could do right and what you could do wrong. And he tried to keep learning how to do things right. And what would he do if he was in that situation? So which pilot would you rather fly with? One that's paying attention to the stories, right? Well, friends, we have stories that we need to be paying attention to. So, you have a choice. Yeah, I'd rather fly with Captain Solenberger. Now, story listening can be important to all of us. Learning, yeah, these story listenings are important. And we need to listen to the stories. Friends, if you want to really get ready for what's coming, I would suggest you start reading the stories of the reformers. I think we're going to see that over again, those same kind of stories. And you can look at how God got them through it. And you can know He can get you through it too. Trust in God is important. Psalm 23. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Question. Will a person following God ever get in tough times? Yes. yes. I've met people who say, if you trust in God, everything will be okay. That's not true. Did everything go really easy for Jesus? No. no. It, did it go really easy for the disciples? No. Don't be surprised if it doesn't always go easy for you either. Satan's got, kind of got a track record. And so it goes on. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. That's why you're not afraid. Jesus is right in the middle with you. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And where is he when he's saying that? He's walking the valley of the shadow of death. Just like Paul. Going to kill me? Praise the Lord. The next thing I know is the resurrection. Going to make me live? Praise the Lord. I get to share the gospel some more. 1 John 4. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. You see, if you're really in love with Jesus, you're not afraid of end-time events because you know he's going to get you through it, one way or the other. Daniel 3. Look at this one. I love this story. Here's what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said. They were told that they could bow down and worship this golden image and they could live. Or if they didn't bow down and worship the image, that uh, when the music played, that they were going to get killed thrown into a fiery furnace. And when the music played, they did not bow down. They're brought before the king, and he says to them, okay guys, I remember you, you're kind of good guys, I'm going to give you a second chance. And they basically said, don't bother. Here's what they said. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Now that's worded in just the perfect way to not offend him, right? <laughs> Basically they're saying, king, don't bother giving us a second chance, number one. Our God can take care of us, and if he doesn't, we're still not going to do what you tell us to do. 
And so he said, heat that furnace up seven times hotter. They take them and they cast them down into this probably a pit furnace. And the guys that throw them in are killed by the heat. Their arms and legs are bound. You get thrown into a pit with your arms and legs bound and tell me how you're going to land. Rough or smooth? Very rough. And instantly the ropes burn off of them. They get up, dust off in the fire, and start walking around in the fire. And Nebuchadnezzar's sitting up there thinking, man, I'm going to watch. I thought I was going to watch him burn. <clears throat> One of them has to burn. Let's see. One, two, three. We threw three and they're multiplying in there. There's four. And one of them looks like the Son of God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come up out of there. Meanwhile, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are walking around with Jesus. If it's like unto the Son of God, I'm guessing it's Jesus. And they're walking around with Jesus in there, and all of a sudden they hear Nebuchadnezzar yelling, come up out of the fire. My guess is they looked at Jesus and said, do we have to? <laughs> I mean, they're not nice to us out there, and they're not coming in here to give us any problems. <laughs> And we're with Jesus. I mean, hey, you see when you get caught in the middle? You're with Jesus. That's where the joy is. That's where the peace is. Amen. And Jesus probably said, yeah, you've got their, his attention. It's time to go on out and talk to him. Mm -hmm. And they came out and they check him out. The ropes are gone. But, you know, even, even all those little hairs on their knuckles and stuff, you know what happens when you get too close to a candle? Psst. And uh, it smells. Mm -hmm. Didn't have any of that smell. All their little hairs are still intact. And they've been walking around in the fire, but they were with Jesus. Yeah. So trust in God is really important. If you want peace in your life, you trust in God. Not necessarily that you're going to live a long life, but that you're living with Jesus and He's going to work it out for good. If you don't have trust in God, all you have left is humor. And military guys are well known for what's called gallows humor. Uh, aircraft carrier pilots who come and go off aircraft carriers. Just think about landing on a moving aircraft carrier, or moving runway, and the back end kind of has a little bit of up and down motion. And, uh, you know, if you, if you come in a little too low, you kind of go splat and down into the water, and that's the end of your flying career. If you come in a little too high, well, you're not going to get the runway and you're going to have to go around again. And so it, you've got to hit it kind of right. And they actually hit the runway really hard because they don't want to come in too low. And so they come down and they get far enough and they bam down on it hard. They hope their tail hook catches a cable. But just in case it doesn't, they put on full throttle when they hit that runway so they can take back off. And so you hit, you hope your tail hook grabs, at the mean, same time, you're throttling it, you're accelerating, and all of a sudden you stop. It's a rough landing. Every one of them. And they make all kinds of jokes about the ways you can get killed. Why? To control your fear, you have to name your fear. But it's a lot better to name it in prayer and give it to God than just to, in a joke. There's a guy by the name of Steve. He was working in the World Trade Center. The first tower had already been hit. And he'd started to evacuate, and they told him, it's too dangerous on the ground, it's safer to go back up to your office. So they went back up. Their tower was fine, so far. And he was on the phone with a guy from Chicago. And he was talking back and forth, and this guy from Chicago called just to check on him, you know, friends. And he said, no, everything's fine, they told us to stay here, it's safe in our building. And the guy in Chicago is listening, you know, talking in the conversation, and all of a sudden, this is what he hears. God, I can't do it. It's all yours. And the line goes dead. What's happened to Steve? As he's talking on the phone, he looks up and finds himself looking at the cockpit of a plane headed right at his window. He dives under his desk. I mean, what would you do if you're looking at a cockpit coming in your window? He dropped the phone. God, I can't do it. It's all yours. Is that not naming a fear and giving it to God? <laughs> you don't have much time in this particular situation. After everything kind of stops the chaos, Steve gets up from under his desk. There is a wing 
20 feet from his desk in his office mm -hmm. space. He heads for the escapeway. And Steve is the only survivor from his floor. He was on the floor that got hit. Hey, what better way is there to do it? If you live or die, then say, God, I can't do it. It's all yours. Then there's being alert and listening. 1 Peter 5.8 be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking he, whom he may devour. And Isaiah 30, 21, Your ears shall hear a word behind you, saying, This is the way, walk in it, whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. Survivors are known a couple of things here. One, they are alert. Most people in a crisis situation have their vision and everything closed down. I can remember having that happen to me one time when I literally went black. Thankfully for me, the reaction is normally different than that. 